Welcome to Audiobook 365 Stories. The big house was like a beautiful palace, though it took some time for everyone to get in, and Beth found it very hard to pass the lions. Old Mr. Lawrence was the biggest lion, but after he had talked kindly to each one of the girls and chatted with their mother, nobody felt too scared of him, except timid Beth. The other lion was the fact that they didn't have much money and Lori was rich. This made them hesitant to accept favors they couldn't repay. But after a while, they realized that Lori thought of them as the ones helping him, and he did everything he could to show his gratitude for Mrs. March's warm welcome, their cheerful company, and the comfort he found in their humble home. So they forgot about their pride and exchanged kindnesses without worrying about who was giving more. Lots of nice things happened around that time, because their new friendship grew quickly. Everyone liked Lori, and he told his teacher that the Marches were really great girls. With their youthful enthusiasm, they included the lonely boy in their activities, and he enjoyed their innocent friendship. Since he never had a mother or sisters, he quickly felt their positive influence and their active, lively ways made him feel lazy for not doing much. He was tired of studying and found people more interesting now. Mr. Brooke had to give bad reports because Lori was always skipping lessons and going to the March's house instead. Don't worry, let him have fun and catch up later, said the old man. The nice lady next door says he studies too much and needs young friends, fun, and exercise. I think she's right, and I've been pampering him too much. Let him do what he wants, as long as he's happy. He can't get into trouble in that small house over there, and Mrs. March is helping him more than we can. They had such good times together. They played games, put on shows, went sledding, and had fun ice skating. They enjoyed evenings in the old living room, and sometimes they had parties at the big house. Meg could visit the greenhouse anytime she wanted and enjoy the flowers. Joe read a lot of books from the new library and made the old man laugh with her opinions. Amy drew pictures and admired beauty, and Lori acted like he owned the place in a very fun way. But Beth, even though she really wanted to play the grand piano, couldn't gather the courage to go to the fancy house, which Meg called the Mansion of Bliss. She went once with Joe, but the old man, not knowing about her shyness, stared at her so intensely from under his bushy eyebrows and said, Hey, so loudly that it scared her. Her feet shook on the floor, and she never told her mother. She ran away, saying she'd never go back there, not even for the piano she loved. No one could convince her to overcome her fear until Mr. Lawrence found out about it somehow and decided to fix things. During one of his short visits, he cleverly talked about music, mentioning great singers and wonderful organs he had heard. He told such interesting stories that Beth couldn't resist listening. She crept closer fascinated. Mr. Lawrence kept talking, not paying attention to her, as if she wasn't even there. He talked about Lori's music lessons and teachers. Then, as if he just had the idea, he said to Mrs. March, The boy isn't playing as much music now, and I'm glad. But 
The piano isn't being used. Would any of your girls like to come and practice on it now and then, just to keep it in good condition? Beth couldn't help but step forward, her hands pressed tightly together in excitement. The thought of playing on that amazing instrument thrilled her. Before Mrs. March could answer, Mr. Lawrence continued with a little nod and smile. They can come any time. I'm in my study at the other end of the house. Lori is often out, and the servants don't come near the drawing room after nine o'clock. He acted like he was leaving, and Beth decided to speak up. She wanted to play, especially since no one would hear her. Please, tell the girls what you said. I'll come if it's okay, Beth said, feeling grateful but nervous. Are you the one who loves music? He asked kindly. Yes, I'm Beth. I love music, and I'll come if nobody will be bothered, she replied, trembling a bit at her own boldness. Not a soul will hear you, my dear. The house is quiet most of the day. Come and play as much as you want, and I'll appreciate it. You're very kind, sir. Beth blushed like a rose when she saw the friendly look on his face, but she wasn't scared anymore. She squeezed his hand gratefully because she couldn't find the words to thank him for the wonderful gift he had given her. The old man gently brushed her hair back and kissed her forehead. He whispered, in a voice few people ever heard, I once had a little girl with eyes like yours. God bless you, my dear. Goodbye, madam. And off he hurried. Beth was overjoyed and rushed to tell her mother the wonderful news. Since the girls weren't home, she excitedly shared it with her family. She sang happily that evening, and they all laughed because she played the piano on Amy's face while sleeping. The next day, after seeing both the old and young men leave, Beth finally made it inside through the side door. She tiptoed to the drawing room, where the piano stood. By chance, some easy music lay on the piano, and with trembling fingers and frequent pauses, Beth finally played the instrument. She forgot her fear, herself, and everything else, lost in the joy of the music, like hearing the voice of a dear friend. She stayed until Hannah came to take her home for dinner, but she couldn't eat. She just smiled at everyone feeling happy. After that, she slipped through the hedge nearly every day, and the big drawing room was filled with beautiful music. She didn't know that Mr. Lawrence opened his study door to listen to the old-fashioned songs he liked. She didn't see Lori standing guard in the hall to keep the servants away. She didn't realize that the music books and new songs were put there just for her. When he talked to her about music, she thought he was just being kind by sharing helpful things. So she enjoyed herself and found that her wish had come true just as she hoped. Maybe it was because she was so grateful for this gift that she received an even greater one. In any case, she deserved both. Mother, I want to make Mr. Lawrence a pair of slippers. He's so nice to me, and I want to thank him. Can I do that? Beth asked a few weeks later. Yes, dear. He'll be very pleased, and it's a lovely way to thank him. The girls will help you, and I'll pay for making them replied Mrs. March, 
who was happy to fulfill Beth's request because she rarely asked for anything for herself. After discussing with Meg and Joe, they chose a pattern for the slippers, bought the materials, and Beth started making them. She worked diligently, with occasional help over the tricky parts. She was good with the needle, and the slippers were finished before anyone got bored of the project. Then she wrote a short, simple note and, with Lori's help, sneaked the slippers onto the study table one morning before the old man woke up. After this excitement, Beth waited anxiously to see what would happen. A whole day passed, and part of the next, without any acknowledgement, and she started to worry that she had upset her grumpy friend. On the second day in the afternoon, she went out to run an errand and give poor Joanna, the sick doll, some fresh air. When she returned, she saw three, no, for heads popping in and out of the parlor windows. As soon as they spotted her, hands waved and excited voices called out. Here's a letter from the old man. Come quickly and read it. Oh, Beth, he's sent you. Amy started to say, but Joe stopped her by slamming the window shut. Beth hurried inside, feeling nervous. Her sisters grabbed her and led her to the parlor in a triumphant procession, all pointing and talking at once, saying, Look at that! Look at that! Beth looked and turned pale with joy and surprise. There stood a small piano cabinet with a letter on top, addressed to Miss Elizabeth March. For me? gasped Beth, holding on to Joe, feeling overwhelmed. Yes, all for you, my precious. Isn't it wonderful of him? Don't you think he's the nicest old man ever? Here's the key with the letter. We didn't open it, but we're dying to know what he says, exclaimed Joe, hugging her sister and handing her the note. You read it. I can't. I feel so strange. Oh, it's too wonderful. Beth exclaimed, hiding her face in Joe's apron, overwhelmed by her gift. Joe opened the letter and started laughing when she read the first words. Miss March, dear madam, how elegant it sounds. I wish someone would write to me like that, said Amy, admiring the old-fashioned address. I've had many pairs of slippers, but none suited me as well as yours. Joe continued reading. Heartsease is my favorite flower, and these will always remind me of the kind giver. I like to repay kindness, so I hope you'll accept something that belonged to my granddaughter. With thanks and best wishes, James Lawrence. There, Beth, that's something to be proud of, I'm sure. Lori told me how much Mr. Lawrence loved the child who passed away and how he kept all her little things. Just think. He's given you her piano. That's what happens when you have big blue eyes and love music, Joe said, trying to comfort Beth, who was trembling with excitement. Look at the beautiful brackets for candles, the pretty green silk with a gold rose, and the lovely rack and stool, Meg added, showing off the piano's features. Your humble servant. James Lawrence. Imagine him writing that to you. I'll tell the girls. They'll think it's amazing, said Amy, impressed by the note. Try it, honey. Let's hear the sound of the little piano, 
said Hannah, who always shared in the family's joys and sorrows. So Beth tried it, and everyone agreed it was the most wonderful piano they had ever heard. It had been freshly tuned and looked perfect, but the real magic was in Beth's happy face as she lovingly played the keys and pedals. You'll have to go and thank him, Joe joked, never thinking Beth would actually do it. Yes, I will. I think I'll go now before I get too nervous thinking about it. And to the family's utter amazement, Beth walked down the garden, through the hedge, and into the Lawrence's house. Well, I never. The piano has made her brave. She'd never have done it otherwise, exclaimed Hannah, watching in astonishment while the girls were left speechless by the miracle. They would have been even more surprised if they had seen what Beth did next. Believe it or not, she knocked on the study door without giving herself time to think. When a gruff voice said, Come in, she entered, walked right up to Mr. Lawrence, who looked surprised, and held out her hand, saying with a slight tremor in her voice, I came to thank you, sir, for... But she didn't finish because he looked so friendly that she forgot her words and, remembering that he had lost his beloved granddaughter, she hugged him and kissed him on the cheek. If the roof had suddenly flown off the house, the old gentleman wouldn't have been more shocked. But he liked it. Oh, yes, he liked it very much. He was so touched and pleased by that trusting kiss that all his grumpiness disappeared. He lifted her onto his knee and pressed his cheek against hers, feeling like he had his own granddaughter back. From that moment, Beth stopped fearing him and sat there chatting with him as if they had known each other forever, because love conquers fear and gratitude can overcome pride. When she went home, he walked her to her gate, shook her hand warmly, and tipped his hat as he walked back, looking very dignified and upright, like the handsome, soldierly old gentleman he was. When the girls witnessed this, Joe started dancing with joy, Amy nearly fell out of the window in surprise, and Meg exclaimed with hands raised, Well, I think the world is ending.